Welcome to the School of Chemistry at the University of Bristol. This short informal video will take you from the front door and tour both our teaching laboratories. On entering the School of Chemistry, you need to present your ID or valid reason for being in the building to our porters. Our porters are the security in the School of Chemistry. To the right of the porters is the undergraduate lounge. This is where undergraduates come to socialise before or after lectures and is also a workstation. In non-Covid times, there be four times as many chairs and twice as many tables present. There is also a small cafe shop. The teaching laboratories are on levels five and six. Now, bearing in mind that you enter the School of Chemistry on level two, there are stairs that you can climb, or for the less energetic, there are a couple of lifts. The view from the landing of outside the teaching laboratories is worth a look. As the School of Chemistry sits on top of a hill, you can see a vast area of the city of Bristol below. On entry to the teaching laboratories on either floor, you'll find a bank of student lockers. Whilst you're in the laboratories, these are for storing your outside coats, bags, and any parcels that you happen to have that you cannot take into the laboratory. What you will need to take into the laboratory with you, possibly a pen and paper or a laptop. At this point, students need to put on their lab coats and safety glasses for entering the laboratory proper. The teaching laboratories were totally refurbished about 15 years ago when Bristol Chem Labs became the UK's Centre for Excellence in the Teaching and Learning of Practical Chemistry. The refit of the two floors was a multi-million pound project. Each teaching laboratory holds just over 100 students to be able to do individual practical work. The layout of each floor is the same. Each floor is effectively divided into two laboratory areas between which is the technical support area. Undergraduates are not allowed within the technical support area because of health and safety reasons. As you can see, the laboratories are a bit different from a school laboratory in that there are no stools for students to sit at whilst they conduct experiments at the fume hoods. Very few schools would have this many fume hoods. All chemical experiments, with the exception of those requiring instrumentation, should take place within a fume hood to cut down the potential for hazardous vapours in the laboratory. The air in the laboratories is changed roughly every five to ten minutes. Air which has been heated or cooled and filtered comes in through the blue tube-like structures on the ceiling and passes out through the fume cupboards which run 24-7. This video of the laboratories was taken during the Easter vacation when the undergraduate students were not in the laboratories and as you can see I've been set up because of Covid. The space in immediately in front of the technical area is normally furbished with some large tables for which undergraduates can work without the requirement for wearing safety glasses or indeed disposable rubber gloves. The teaching laboratory that we are currently in is the first year teaching laboratory and there is a lot of equipment on show. We have rotary evaporators at the edges of the room. We have infrared spectrometers, diamond IR machines that are routinely used with organic practicals. All the sinks are actually down one edge of the laboratory rather than being in individual places and the sinks are there for only washing equipment. We also have some equipment in the lab such as these blue pieces here that are used for training industrial chemists. There are large numbers of balances of different precisions around the laboratory and the covered boxes that you see here that are equipment that would normally be on use like filter paper, pipettes, etc. And they've been covered up here uh, as a dust protector. We're in the middle of the laboratory here now for instrumentation experiments, as you can see with the fact that we've got stools that are present. The yellow bin there is for disposal of certain materials like paper towels in the laboratory and for nitrile rubber gloves. The plastic covering is covering up some gas chromatography apparatus. As you can see there are lots of pieces of equipment so there are very little time wasted in the laboratory queuing for equipment to be made available. The door here is for the technicians, it leads into the technical support area. 
There is a hatch at the front of this area that students engage with the technicians when they need help or need additional apparatus. Normally the equipment required for an individual practical is put on the bench in readiness for the students when they arrive in the laboratory. The technical support area houses everything that's required for the set of experiments that are being conducted. With 100 students in the laboratories we don't have the students doing the same experiments at any one time. There are usually six different circuses of experiments that are undertaken and all the chemicals that are required are readily available from the technicians. The technicians have their own chemical free offices in the back of the technicians area. The yellow bins that you see at the end of the laboratories there are for sharps. We use hypodermic and cannula in some experiments, but more commonly thin layer chromatography sheets are disposed of here. You might have noticed on the wall past that we have both refrigerators, freezers and ice making machines in the laboratory. Here is the hatch for the technician's support and a quick view down the left hand side of this laboratory which is effectively a mirror image from the one that you've just been through. Now we're entering the second and third year teaching laboratories which look very similar. In fact they're about 95% the same as the first year teaching labs. The main difference is in a, a little bit of layout in the right hand side front part of the lab and also in the amount of instrumentation both within the fume cupboard and outside of the fume cupboards. This area is the bit that's different. This is an instrument area. So here we have a GC instrument and lots of specific instruments relating to second and third year experiments. The large dewey there is with liquid nitrogen because our undergraduates are expected to work with liquid nitrogen. Here's a drying cabinet for drying off equipment. You'll find one of those in the first year labs. As below on level five, we have infrared spectrometers of slightly different types here. This one would house a salt plate, which is still required in some experiments. And there would be large numbers of weighing machines of various precisions. Inside the fume cupboard itself, you'll see it's a little bit more crowded. We have what's called a Schlenk line in there, which is specific to some organic reactions in the second year. And as before, we have lots of scaffolding, which are the permanent fixtures for clamp stands, and reagent disposal bottles, chlorinated and unchlorinated solvent waste, drying agent that's been used, etc. We don't like wandering around the laboratories trying to get rid of these in a central position. The fume cupboard controls there control everything from water and nitrogen line and the vacuum pumps that are required when running Buckner filtration. Another infrared spectrometer. Again, the sharps and the glass waste containers. Unlike the first year teaching labs, we have two GCMSs here, two gas chromatography mass spectrometers, complete with their pumps and their hydrogen feed lines. Again, we're keeping the dust off some apparatus. Alongside these we have two simple GCs for undergraduate experiments. They're the same as would be found in a research lab. And the fume covers alongside those are nearly the same as the previous ones, except they have hydrogen lines in, so we can do experiments on reduction using hydrogen gas. And here we have a gas door and part of the army of rotary evaporators. Each side of the laboratory has a wash station, so a shower station in case a chemical spills hand washing sinks because you don't wash your hands where you wash equipment and of course an eye wash and that concludes the quick flyby tour of the teaching laboratories at the school of chemistry university of bristol or as it's known bristol chem labs